Hello folks, Steve Lentz here with Discover Options here at Option View Systems. Welcome to this presentation of three different market timing reports for advanced options traders. This will be for Friday, December 15th, getting ready for Monday's open, December 18th. Presented material is for educational purposes only and should not be construed as personalized financial advice. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future performance. Uh, we have three reports for you today, but first I'd like you to subscribe if you haven't already. That way you get uh, sent some notices that we have uh, put up new videos. And also we have a free ebook called Simple Steps to Options Trading Success, co-authored by myself and Jim Graham. Go ahead and click the link. Give us your information. We will get that free ebook right out to you. We have three reports. All three relate to the S&P 500. We have a report for those of you trading uh, butterflies and condors, selling premium in a delta neutral way. Uh, the bull put spread report for those of you that lean bullish on your premium selling strategies. And then also the directional likelihood report for statistically minded S&P traders. Uh, here is the market condition that all three reports relate to. We gauge market condition in terms of three different uh, dimensions, price action, trend, and then the uh, situation regarding the stochastic, the 1533 stochastic. So in terms of price action, we had a downswing bar on Thursday. Friday was an upswing bar. That price action took place as we are in an uptrend above the 50-day simple moving average. And in terms of the stochastic, we're right around 85, and so we define that as being between 60 and 100, but it's trending beneath the percent D, the three-day simple moving average. All three dimensions combined create a market condition that has, that has occurred roughly 127 times since January of 2000. Pretty good, you know, database uh, set for us to look at and compare uh, uh, to uh, just the general broad history. So let's get to the first report with that market condition in mind. So since January of 2000, we've had about 4,538 daily closes of the S&P 500. Now of those, almost two-thirds, 65.6, almost two-thirds have been favorable bars for selling premium in a delta-neutral fashion, condors and butters, where the actual 21 bar subsequent movement was less than what was being implied by the option prices. Got that? And so roughly two-thirds of the time in the S&P, all right, the market ends up moving less than what the option prices were implying. Okay, and so that's our benchmark look, our benchmark measurement is that two-thirds of the bars are favorable for trading condors and butterflies. Now, often when people trade condors and butterflies, you know, when they lose, they lose big. And so we really need to, uh, uh, hope, I hope you, that you have an approach to trading butters and condors that uh, gives you a bit of an edge, but we want to look at the market condition and see if there's an edge right now. So during that same time from January of 2000 to the present, our current market condition, as I told you, has occurred 127 times. Now, of those 127, 74.8% have been favorable, similarly, like what I described, for selling premium through those strategies. Now, 74.8 is higher than two-thirds, so this implies an edge of roughly 9.2%, pretty good. So pretty much, this you know, when this market condition occurs, three-quarters of the time, it turns out to be favorable as opposed to just two-thirds of the time. So there's a bit of an edge here, which is nice. Statistically, it's more likely than usual that our current market condition will end up being a favorable one for market-neutral option premium selling, such as through condors and butterflies, okay? So that's the report as it stands for the delta-neutral uh, premium sellers. Let's now go to those that like to sell put options a standard deviation away, maybe 30 days out. Okay, this is just our bull put spread timing report. And as I mentioned, we've had over 4,500 daily closes of the S&P. Okay, now 83.2% of the time, all right, 
Um, it turns out uh, that the, those 83.2% of the bars are favorable for selling put premium, a standard deviation away, 30 calendar days out or 21 bars out. Because 83.2% of the time, the downside movement uh, was less than what the option prices were implying. Okay, and that's even after we factor in the SIBO skew, where the out-of-the-money puts have a higher implied volatility than the out-of-the-money calls. And so that's our benchmark, okay, 83.2% of the time. If you're going to do a bull put spread in the S&P 30 days out, standard deviation away, you can flip a coin 83.2% of the time, you know, you're going to win. The market will not go down and touch that short strike. Won't touch it, okay? The other 16.8% of the time, it will go down and touch that short strike. Now, out of our 127 times that our market condition has occurred, 86.6% of those were similarly favorable. Now, that's higher than the 83.2, so we have a little bit of an edge of 3.4% for selling bull put spreads 30 days out, a standard deviation away. Where just hit, if the market hits the short strike, then you're out with a loss. Okay, so statistically, uh, right now the current market condition is one that is more favorable for selling out of the money put premium. Looking at the history of this market condition in the past. Okay, so that's it for the bull put spread report. Let's now go to the market likelihood report. And what we're looking for here is we're answering the question: is 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 based upon when the mark, our current market condition has occurred in the past, and based upon what the market did back then for those 127 occurrences, what is the market likely to do now? Okay, what's the market likely to do if we were to look at the past when this has occurred? So to do that, we use price distribution bands. Price distribution bands. I don't like to do it using a, a you know, a, a just a, you know, how much did the market go up on average? I like to look at a distribution set of bands this way. Let me just show you an example here. These are five-day distribution bands. And what we're doing is I'm going out a standard deviation five days out from the close. And we ask the question, what did the market do from this close? Did it go up and hit the upper band? Did it go down and hit the lower band? Or did it wobble around? All right, and then I'm going to keep track of that for every one of the closes going back 4,500 plus times. That way I get a sense for how price is distributed. And I do this not only for the five-day band, but also for the 10-day bands and 15-day bands. So we're looking out one, two, and three weeks out. All right, so when we go to the rep actual report, we can see that for those 4,538 uh, occurrences, the market hit the upper five-day band 21.4% of the time, the upper 10-day band 15.9, the upper 15-day band three weeks out 15.1% of the time. Then on the lower band, hit the lower band 16.4, lower 10 16.6, the lower 15 19.4. So that is the baseline distribution for the history of the SPX going back to January of 2000. That's just the baseline price distribution one, two, and three weeks out. Now, when we look at our current market condition, and in this look, it found 130 occurrences. Out of those 130, it hit the upper five-day band 8.5% of the time. Now, that's a bit less than the 21.4. Do you see that? That's a difference of 13.1 when you do the rounding internal rounding there and then we have a difference on the uh, the 10 day band the upper 10 day band a nine percent difference upper 15 day band a 7.4 percent difference 15.1 to 7.7 .7. you see that now on the lower band similarly these got struck less often as well so what's this a picture of where all six bands got struck less often than the baseline history that we see up here. This is a picture of lower market volatility. Lower market volatility in general. 
where all the bands are getting struck less often on average. So that's, a, that's good for the premium sellers. Now, does, does it mean the market's going to be completely tame? No, it just means that based upon the history of this market condition, it's more likely than normal that the market will be less volatile. So let's now look at an instance. What I like to do is give you guys an edge for when Monday comes, because when Monday comes, if price goes above Friday's high, I'm asking the question, what's the distribution in that situation? If the market goes down below Friday's low, what's the historical distribution in that situation? So of the 81 times when the market ascended above Friday's high, you know, in this particular market condition, okay, the upper five-day band got struck only 1.2% of the time. Look at that. Crazy. The upper 10-day band, 6.2. The upper 15 band, 7.4. The upper bands obviously got struck far less often than the baseline history. Okay, on the lower bands, again, 7.4, 7.4, you know, far less often. The, the lower, look at this, the lower 15-day band got struck 23.5% of the time out of those 81. Isn't that weird? Isn't that weird? That's kind of strange. Now, but that still says five of the six bands got struck less often, really by quite a margin in those in those those particular cases. So again, if price descends above the high on of, of Friday's high, well, I think you see the picture here. And we can't really lean this any one direction or the other, aside to say that, you know, there's a, a good sense of um, of a lower market volatility. This 23.5% is intriguing, though, because that's pretty much going to be close. That's about 20 times out of that 81 price descended and hit that lower 15-day band. It, it fell a full standard deviation, which is quite strong. That's quite strong. So interesting how the market will be choppy, 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 but a quarter of the time, boom, down it goes. Interesting stuff. So be aware of that. Now, that's if it goes above Friday's high. Now, what if it goes below Friday's low? Okay, if it goes below Friday's low, clearly the upper fifth, the upper bands, look at that, they're getting struck about the same as much, same amount as the historical baseline. All across the board, the upper five-day bands get struck about the same as historical. The lower bands got struck uh, quite a bit less often if it goes down below Friday's low. Remember, because we're in an uptrend, right? long-term uptrend and so that's what kicks in apparently here i hope this information has been helpful and contributes to your wise decision making and uh, uh thank you for joining us we'll be back next week here at the uh market report i'm steve lentz take care have a great week happy holidays Bye bye